Hey guys, we're the Jersey Comic Crew. In today's video, we're doing a full recap, breakdown, and yes, Easter eggs of The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 3, titled The Heiress. Make sure to stay tuned for all your Star Wars goodness. Hey guys, welcome back to the Jersey Comic Crew. You know why you're here. We are breaking down possibly one of the best, if not the best, episodes of The Mandalorian. Full spoilers ahead. I know I am on the edge of my seat talking about this. I'm so excited. Uh, I've already watched it <laughs> too many times. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. It was a fantastic episode. Fantastic episode. But let's get right into it. We have so much to cover. And we're going to start off with, of course, Rob's recaps. What's where up? Rob is going to break down every tidbit, every spoilerific, monumental moment of this episode before I break down the Easter eggs and we talk about what the possibilities are next because I was very wrong about something. So yes. take it away, Rob. So like Chris said, we're going to go do a quick recap of the episode, talk about all those little morsels of spoilers. This is your spoiler warning. Then we're going to talk about the good stuff, what's going to happen next in our theories. So real quick, we know that Mando, Baby Yoda, and the Frog Lady, they crash land on tracks uh, where Mando now leaves the, his destroyed Razor Crest with the Mon Calamaris, the peep, the Admiral Akbar's, if you guys are yes. familiar with it. It's a trap. The meme. The meme. You guys know the meme. It's a trap. That people to fix his ship. The frog lady reunites with her husband after essentially her Uber ride from hell. Yes. And the frog husband gives Mando a tip on where he could find some more Mandalorians or info on Mandalorians at the bar. So Mando and the child, they go to the bar. They, Mando orders, you know, food for the baby. Got some nice squid soup that tries to attack him. Alien reference, you know, gets on him, just like we saw in the last episode. Don't play with your food. Uh, and Mando strikes a deal with a Quarren, which looks like a squid kind of alien, which is really cool to see, to take him where he knows more about the Mandalorians. The Quarren invites Mando and the child to watch a feeding of the Macklemore. Uh, no, it's not the Macklemore. <laughs> Downtown! It's uh, the, the Mama Core. The Mama Core? The Mama Core? The yes. Mamacore? Kind of looks like Macklemore, though. <laughs> <laughs> the Mamacore. This, like, uh, aquatic sarlacc, essentially. So it's a weird sea serpent thing, like like a squid. Yeah, the Mamacore is, is very much like an aquatic sarlacc, right? It has this giant mouth, almost like a water kraken, giant octopus feel, uh, like the mm -hmm. sarlacc was in Tatooine, where it lives under the sand kind of thing. So it's very similar. All right, perfect. So... Well, when that happens, the Quarren essentially baseball swings the baby into the pit, and this aquatic shark that Macklemore comes up <laughs> and eats Baby Yoda. Thankfully, Baby Yoda puts up the low shield, takes it down. Mando immediately jumps into the water uh, to try to save it, and then we hear the squid people, the Quarrens, say this is their chance to get the armor, the highly coveted Mandalorian berserk armor. Best then part. the best part, I think, probably of the whole episode happens right here. You know what I'm talking about. Three Mandalorians show up out of nowhere to come and save Mando. We know the three Mandalorians' names are Kasak Reeves, Axe Wolves, and yes, Bo-Katan. So after a great fight scene where the other Mandalorians save Baby Yoda and Mando, they start to exchange information to talk. The three Mandalorians take off their helmets, and then Mando immediately gets flashbacks like, oh, great, you're not real Mandalorians. And because Bo-Katan, for those of you who are in the know, former leader of the of Mandalorians, she's like, no, 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 homie. You are from a, a religious zealot group that believes in this weird old way. It's not practical. This is not what we're doing anymore. This Mando says, way. exactly, this is not the way. Leaves. He goes back to Trask and gets ambushed by the Quarren's brothers. The Quarren are upset that the brother is dead. And then again, the Mandalorians come out of nowhere, save Mando again. So now Mando's like, all right, maybe I need to hear these people out. Maybe they're not bad. They saved me twice in one day. And he um, didn't say thank you. <laughs> no, very, no manners. No manners. And that's where Baby Yoda gets it from. That's why he ate the eggs in the last episode. Or she. I and after, after he tells Baby Yoda to mind your manners. Yeah, doesn't exactly. Say thank you. Does not say thank you. So now the all four of them are sitting down at the table. Bo Katan tells her plan to Mando, telling her that she needs to restock her weapons from the dwindling remains of the Empire. She wants to use these weapons to retake Mandalore. Mando says that planet is cursed. It's not worth it. Bo Katan says, Don't believe everything you hear, because she obviously 
is from there. She ruled there. She knows the history there a little bit more. Trying to give some more intelligence and information to Mando, who doesn't really Real know information. much about them. Yeah. So Mando then in return says, hey, listen, I need to take this baby uh, to the Jedi, which before we thought we didn't know if it was the Jedi or the other race. But now we know it's the Jedi. So we got confirmation here, which is awesome. I didn't think we were going to get that. Absolutely. Bogotan agrees to say, I'm going to get her the information of where other Jedi are. If you help me take down this Imperial ship. So Mando decides to leave the kid with the babysitters, which is always great that he makes these friends. So that way when he does crazy <laughs> things, he's like, all right, baby, you stay here. I'm going to go kick ass. He leaves it with the frog people. And- which is great because like, he's like, you're leaving me the thing that just ate th- 35% of my kids. Right? <laughs> uh, so the four Mandalorian storms the freighter and t- they take out dozens of stormtroopers. There's even a joke within the episode that the stormtroopers can't even hit the broad side of a barn or something, right. which was, was fantastic to hear that in canon. So after they take down some stormtroopers, Bo-Katan reveals that she's taking the the freighter as a whole down. And uh, Mando's like, this is not the deal. This is not the same thing. bo reveals that she needs something that the Empire stole from her in order for her to continue her rule of Mandalore. Which, if we know, if you guys watch our videos, you already know that it's the Darksaber that Moth Gideon has. So the empire, the imp- the empire's troops that are left on the ship in the uh, the main control center, they call Moth Gideon for help. They say Mandalorians are on the ship, they're in the hole, they're gonna get us. And Moth Gideon says, if they're already there, it's too late. You know what to do. Pretty much hangs up on them. The captain <laughs> says, all right, boom, boom, shoots his two captains in the face. Long live the empire. And then he's he's doing a, a die bomb. He's like, I have to die. <laughs> And I guess, yeah, die for the cause. I have to die. I'm like, well, they're not going to kill you, but okay. The There's ma- got to be escape pods on that thing, right? Like, like it's a massive, it's a freighter. You, like- know, you know what it is? It's because they're poor now. They can't afford uh, the yeah. escape pod, uh, yeah, you know, that's why. deluxe back. No, jet- no jettisoning anymore. Yeah, right? They're like, when they go to buy the Imperial uh, Star Destroyers at the, you know, the Imperial Car Salesman, right? The, the add-on. The ones now. Yeah, the <laughs> add-on for escape pods is just too much. They're like, you know what? It's too much. No, we're not doing it. If they die, they die. We're getting new people. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not, it's not worth it. I'm not saving people it. People want jobs. People need jobs. Exactly. Especially in the galaxy. Exactly. So, the Mandalorians do eventually stop the freighter and save the freighter. Bo-Katan questions the remaining captain if he has it. Do you have it? Didn't say what it is, but we all know as the audience. He responds, if you're here already, then you already know that it's not here. Bo-Katan does hold up her end of the bar, her bargain, because that is the Mandalorian way. She tells Mando, take the foundling, Baby Yoda, to the city of Kaldolan on the first planet Corvus. There you'll find a Jedi named Ahsoka Tano, and we all cry. <laughs> Tell her bo sends you. We cry we again. Cry. <laughs> we we start freaking out. I was back for it. Uh, Mando and bo exchange. This is the way. Mando goes back, picks up Baby Yoda, where he learned that, you know, frog eggs are friends, not food. He's, he's playing with a little one of them. He gets Fish in his are little, friends, not food. He gets in his little rickety patched razor crest, which is a terrible job they did. And he's, you know, making his way shimmying to Corvus. And that is the recap of the fantastic episode three, The Heiress. Wow. Um, it's a lot. It's it's definitely a lot. One thing I do want to note, we haven't seen our boy, the Fet Man, in this episode or last episode. But yeah. you best believe we're probably going to see him in the next one. It seems like Maybe. this pace of this show is picking up a lot quicker than we had in season one. Uh, we already met bo the leader. We already know her motive. We're going to probably see her a lot more throughout the season. Now he's going to meet Ahsoka Tom, and he's probably going to learn the Jedi connection with the baby. And we're probably going to see... There's so many moving parts in this that this is so much bigger than the last season. I'm really excited. But you know what I'm more excited for, Chris? What? Them Easter eggs. I know you got Ooh. some great Easter eggs in this episode. I do. That I overlooked, and I'm sure plenty of you guys have overlooked. Uh, why don't you share it with the class? Yeah, and I'm going to start going through these because I have a lot of speculation. I'm sure Rob does, too, for what's happening next. Oh, yeah. And uh, there's some stuff we want to talk about. So 
Yeah, number one, uh, in the beginning when Lando, Lando, Mando <laughs> lands when, his... When Mando Lando's his carry-on. When Mando Lando's his, his racer crest, uh, he, he does the really funny thing where it's like, oh, great, we landed, we were safe, and the engine blows, he falls in the water. I like that. Uh, what takes him out is this, like, giant crane mm-hmm. that looks to be a modified Adept. Obviously, the giant oh. elephant from Empire Strikes Back on the planet Hoth that are coming to get the rebels and shooting everything down uh looks like on trash they salvaged one and repurposed it as this giant crane okay um number two the mon calamari and the quarren species make their return in the star wars universe Mm -hmm. obviously mon calamari we know mostly from admiral akbar from the original trilogy and the sequels yeah and the quarren are also from the same planet mon cala which we get a way more in-depth look at in a couple of episodes of clone wars where the Mon Calamari and the Quarren are actually in a, a civil war type battle on their planet oh, for territory. Okay. And the Quarren and the Mon Cala don't really get along that much in their planet. And this planet, though, seems like they're kind of like working together and getting along. Because one so. looks like an octopus head and one looks like a squid. Is that what it is? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe. You know, it's racist. You know, we're all in this together. I don't know. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> number three is obviously one of the biggest ones, right? We see Bo Katan, mm-hmm. the official live action appearance of Katie Sackhoff as Bo-Katan. Looks just like Bo-Katan. It's perfect. Perfect. Well, one, they had to, I, I think it's kind of clear that they made the character in the animated series look like Katie Sackhoff because she also voiced yeah. Bo-Katan in Rebels and Clone Wars. So seeing her was great. Uh, and obviously the episode is called The Heiress and she is the heiress. She's the heiress of the throne ah. of Mandalore. Her sister was Satine who led Mandalore and uh-huh. was killed by Darth Maul and Clone Wars, spoiler alert. And we knew Bo-Katan was the last one to have the Darksaber, so making her the Ari- the, Arius, the heiress to the throne of Mandalore, which we also get confirmation that it was stolen because she's obviously hunting it and yeah. wants it back. But yeah, Bo-Katan, if you notice, her helmet is very, like, it's very slim, right? It yeah. kind of has like an owl's peak, like a, it looks like the face of an owl. And she mentions when Mando's kind of like, where, where did you get that armor? You're not a Mandalorian. She's like, it's been in my family for four generations. Like, yeah, I'm I'm a legit Mandalorian. I was born on the planet. I know, like, you know, I'm I'm a I'm royalty. Yeah, born and raised Mandalorian. Yeah, man. Yeah, right. Like punk ass. Like it out of my face. <laughs> so, so she like like name drops like the fact that she's royalty. And the Night Owls is actually originally was Bo Katan squad. And their elite um, Mandalorian commandos, they teamed up with Darth Maul back in the Clone Wars, almost like an allied extremist group close to Death Watch. But once Death Watch kind of took over Mandalore, it was the opposite of what Bo-Katan thought it would be. They split up. So some of the the Night Owls are still kind of Death Watchian, and Mm -hmm. some of them are more under Bo-Katan. And obviously Mm -hmm. she was realized it wasn't good once they killed her sister, Duchess Satine. So... Basically, after Maul killed Satine, took over the planet for himself, you know, all this changed hands through the Republic and Moff Gideon and the Empire, the Night Owls are now basically opposed to the Empire and everything that happened, led by Bo-Katan. Okay. So that is kind of that symbol on her helmet, everything that kind of goes hand in hand with what she's trying to do. Uh, so she also mentions in that conversation, a very short conversation on that, on that ship cruiser, that Mando's faction is called the children of the watch. Oh, he's one of them. And that's referring to the children of the watch, which we don't know for sure, but it seems to be the rest of the faction of death watch, whatever remains of that. It sounds like very uh, reminiscent of like game of Thrones, like the children on the wall. Like these are Mm -hmm. the people on the outskirts, kind of like the most removed from the civilization kind of like keeping towing the line, if you will. When you say children of the watch, that's the first thing that came to my mind. No, it is it is very reminiscent of that, and and it's meant to be kind of like that, right? Where they have these very extreme religious beliefs, and it's kind of holding Mandalore back from progressing and kind of reunifying. Okay. So with you know not taking off armor and stuff like that. So the next thing is a small one, but very very reminiscent. When they get to the freighter, the alarm that goes off is the same alarm in the in the original trilogy of Star Wars oh, on really? every on every ship that just starts going off. Uh, so that was a nice That's kind cool. of like home feeling. Uh, of of panic and peril, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so Mando also says to Bo-Katan, which Rob mentioned earlier, when she go when he thought it was, oh, we're just taking this freighter out, we're we're 
we're going to destroy all the weapons. No, I'm actually taking these weapons and this ship Mm -hmm. to help me in my quest of taking the planet back. And he says along the lines of like, you're altering the deal, you're changing the deal. That is a callback to episode five, Empire Strikes Back, where Lando and Darth Vader are conversating Uh... and Vader is changing the deal of who of Boba Fett taking Han Solo after he's in Carbonite Mm -hmm. and taking back Princess Leia. And Lando goes, you know, this deal's getting worse all the time, you know, and you're altering the deal. That wasn't our deal. You didn't say blah, blah, blah. And Vader's like, you know, I'm altering the deal. Pray, pray I don't alter it any further and threatens Lando. Um, so here's another kind of possible callback. This was one I thought was there, but I, it's, it hasn't been confirmed. When mm-hmm. the captain of the cruiser is trying to like kamikaze the ship into the water. Yeah. They get to him obviously just in time and they save the ship and they pull up and the ship kind of like skims the water and passes by like, almost like that random lookout lighthouse station. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of the beginning of episode three where Anakin and Obi-Wan had to basically land that down General Grievous cruiser on Coruscant on the landing strip. Oh, and it just okay. randomly takes out that, that pillar that like kills people and no one bats an eye. I remember uh, that. The happy landing. One of those. And the obviously the last one is Ahsoka. Yes. Right? We have Ahsoka mentioned. We know she's going to show up this season now. It's it's all but confirmed at this point. We had the name. She mentioned the name, obviously, from Clone Wars Mm -hmm. and Rebels, one of the biggest characters in Star Wars lore now. And yeah, I I cannot wait. So those are the biggest Easter eggs. If I missed any, please let me know in the comments. Um, Because, again, I'm only human. And uh, there possibly may be more I overlook. Awesome. So now we get to the part of the video where that we all like. We get to talk about speculations, like what is next in the Mandalorian uh, universe. So uh, I think it's pretty obvious we're gonna get to see Mandal Mando f- crash his ship onto the next planet. I don't think it's gonna make any more journeys. Uh, he's gonna meet up with Ahsoka Tano, and Ahsoka is essentially gonna give the backstory of all of this to us. I think that's the next thing that we're going to get, right? Ooh, I think she's going to fill in the gaps that super fans don't know, but also fill in gaps that regular fans don't know. So people don't know the story behind the back uh, Darksaber. So we might see that. We might see uh, essentially a flashback story of what happened to Sabine Wren when she had the saber. Maybe she's not longer with us. I think it's a lot of like, Getting everybody caught up. Like, oh, this is what happened. She's probably going to use Baby Yoda to do some strength training and force training. Uh, she probably doesn't know where to take the baby. She's probably going to join them to try to f- bring the baby to the next part. Because the baby is going to be a key figure in this somehow. I think that that's the only thing I can think. Baby's going to be a key point in either the season or the series. And Ahsoka mm. sees that. But she's going to keep it under wraps. So like, oh, he- he's going to be important. It's important that you protect him, that he's part of your clan. I'm going to make sure we're going to try to train him as much as I can in the ways of the force, but it's better to seek a different master. Cause like Soka doesn't seem like the teacher X type to me, but she's definitely yeah. going to fill in the gaps of like, Oh, bo wants a sword for this reason. The sword is in Moff Gideon's hands because of this. That's why he wants the child. There's a reason they want the child. And we're going to, fi- I think we're going to get that in the next episode. And I'm so excited. I, so I, I'm on the fence. Cause I feel like, at the next episode's episode four, and we know that we know there. for sure. Well, we also know for sure that Dave Filoni's directing episode five, and I believe that's the only episode he's directing. I don't think we're going to see her till episode five, if not at the very end oh. of four. Like it ends with a shot of her, and it ends and makes us wait a week for episode five. But I think because it's Filoni's baby, that's when we're going to get Ahsoka. I think this next episode could be a boba fett ketchup you okay. know and i don't mean i don't mean the delicious condiment i mean like boba fett catching mm. up with what's going on with him perhaps he runs into bo katan and the rest of the mandalorians Oh, maybe still looking maybe he's looking for his armor we don't know um but i think the next storyline is going to be very big and and i was already wrong with a major part of this right i had speculated earlier that bo Kat- I didn't think bo Katan was going to be alive. I thought we were only going to see her in flashbacks. I thought so, too. Yeah, we were both thinking that. We thought, because she was the last one to have it. We thought she died, and that's how he got it. Yeah, exactly. Because I was like, man, this is going to be packed. Like, how are they going to do this? And they've done it perfectly. I'm so glad I was wrong. I've never been so happy to be wrong. Mm. And to see bo Katan in real life and, and played by the same voice and all that is just brilliant. But 
I, I don't think this is the last we're going to see of Bo-Katan or her faction either. I think there's a possibility whoever they actually cast as Sabine Wren could mm-hmm. possibly be with Ahsoka because, again, the last time we saw them isn't Clone Wars in the timeline. It's the end of Rebels when they went to look for Ezra Bridger. Yeah. And I think when we see Ahsoka, and hold on to your hats, I think there's a possibility when she, I do agree, I think she's going to tell this story of the Jedi, like, because I think Mando's going to have a lot of questions, right? He's not just going to hand over the child to a stranger, regardless if we know who Ahsoka is or not. Yeah. I think she's going to tell the story of the Jedi, why she left. And we know Obi-Wan, as in Ewan McGregor, was on set of season two, retrying on his costume for when he shoots his own show. Okay. Is there a possibility in these flashbacks... Oh, we see a live action version conversation between Ahsoka and Obi-Wan when she leaves the Jedi Order in this story. And it's a real live action flashback with Ooh. Ewan McGregor. In it. I could I could see that. I think if they did that in true Star Wars fashion, they won't show Ewan McGregor's face until the last second. I will see a glimpse of it. It'll be just like a hooded stranger. Maybe, yeah. But then, but then, like, why have you and McGregor there and not just a regular body double? And trying on the robes. And it's a flashback, so it's not like you're taking away from the main story. Exactly. I I don't I don't know. I don't think I don't think he's there, man. But my biggest question to you, Rob, and to everyone watching, is I think Baby Yoda's story is gonna have to come to a fruition by probably the end of season three. Oh. And I think the reason is, is because I like, obviously he's the cutest thing on the planet. He sells toys, he sells pops, but he's holding him. He's holding Mando back. No, I don't think he's holding Mando back at all. I I think he's raising the stakes of Mando's character and making him a more fuller character because if not, we have no, he has no one to communicate because it's Mm. hard enough when you can't see a face. Right. And you still have to communicate with something. And I think it's a great faction, but if Mando hands it over to the Jedi, what's his purpose? And I think, what we saw in this episode of broadening Mando's mind and being like, listen to Bo-Katan. She knows what the hell she's talking about. She's She's been through all of this. And, and those small tidbits of like, you know, you don't have to always have your helmet on. It doesn't make you not a Mandalorian to not have it. Look yeah. at me. I'm four generations and I'm royalty. And all these things. I think Mando's going to have to join this fight with Bo-Katan, with her, you know, night owls, possibly Boba Fett, which is a big question mark. And also That'd getting cool. the dark saber back from the you know the remnants of the empire to take back Mandalore, and I don't know if you could do that with you know one arm being covered with this baby. Yeah, I so, see that, but I mean, I think I don't know because they could go so different ways. I like the idea of them working together, uh, Boba, Mando, and Bo Katan to take back Mandalore. The Mandalorian taking back Mandalore. I like that aspect. I I think. I, I want to see this kid's story wrapped up, but I, I don't know if there's a story after without the kid. You know what I mean? Like, what's the yeah. point of it without? Like, I can see the the baby bridging the gap between the two. Like, I don't know. Well, I'm, here's I'm the other thing. I'm very curious to see what they do. They have to have a big plan with the baby because if they don't, yeah, they have to wrap him up soon. We want to hear your thoughts down in the comments, guys. Uh, there's so much that this show could go into so many different avenues and paths. We want to hear all of your thoughts. Absolutely. And thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Like really helps the channel out a lot. And if you're new, subscribe, turn on those notifications because you do not want to miss every episode, breakdown Easter egg. So you can be the knowledgeable one in your friend group and tell everyone yes. what you know. And as always, Chris and Rob here, and we will see you next time. Before you go on the screen, you're going to see our icon. Make sure you click that. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. And on the left, you're going to see some more videos that you might like. Check it out.